Mine was taken off out of London Heathrow Airport. He's talking the Gatwick approach. He's in, a, I can't tell you the name of the airliner. I, I guess I can give you their initials, right? I mean, they'd be a TWA. <laughs> and uh, he's climbing out. And he thinks he sees another aircraft off to the right and feels the surge of exigency because it's a potential mid air collision. So he calls Gatwick approach and says, Gatwick approach, Gatwick approach, who's that guy on my right? And the controller comes back and says, Well, sir, if he has sunglasses on, then, then that is your co pilot. No, I hate it when that happens. Oh man, hey. But I did have a chance a while back to talk to a group of female mental patients, which is kind of interesting. And one of them came up after the, at the end of the program. She goes, we, we really like you so much more than those other people come speak to us. And I felt this flush of pride. I said, well, ma'am, thank you very much. That's very nice of you to say that. Just out of curiosity, why is that? And she says, because you think just like we do. <laughs> No. Hey, hey, you're looking at a guy who's so excited about aviation that it takes two glide slopes to bring him down. No, really, I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding, two glide slopes. I get excited by a, I still get excited by a Cessna 170, a 152 flyby. 152 flyby. I like the 152 flyby more than I do the Mooney flyby, the Malibu flyby, the Bonanza flyby, the Glass Star flyby. I like it more than those other aircraft because it lasts so much longer. <laughs> you have a five knot wind. Wow, this thing could last all day. <laughs> oh, it's just so much fun. No, really, I do. I, I like it more than that because those airplanes are so exciting and so much fun. People say, what do you like about aviation, Rod? And I say, you know, I like the grit. I like the grease and I like the grime. And that's just the airport coffee. So there are a lot of good things in aviation that you could have. And uh, I, I guess I like it because the people are so interesting. Uh, we have Edward T. Hall, the anthropologist, once said that if you appreciate people and their stories, he said, you will never be without entertainment. Uh, last year when I was here at Sun and Fun, a kid came up to me, and folks, I don't make fun of anybody, because you're looking at a guy who's been made fun of more than anybody else in this side of the Anchorage localizer. And a kid came up to me, she, he said, He's, have you ever seen this? He had a ball bearing bolted to his tongue. His tongue was pierced. And he had a ball bearing right there on the head. How many people have ever seen that before? How, how many people have one right now? How many people have one? Yeah, uh, what, what guy? You have one, sir? Excellent. Uh, <laughs> excellent. I'll be directing my presentation to this side of the audience over here. Uh, but he had a ball bearing, and, and it slurred his speech. He's a young kid, about 17 years old. He actually said this to me. I'm not making this up. He said, excuse me. He said, do you think that this thing will affect my airline career? That's what he said. <laughs> folks, I don't make fun of anybody, especially young folks. But I looked at him, I said, well, that all depends. You planning on answering any questions during the interview? <laughs> so I'll think about it. I said, there you go. See, what you want to do is get the yes or no question interview format. You like to fly? Mm -hmm. You're going to crash? Mm -hmm. You're hired. Oh, goody. And, uh, no, but yeah, if you have the ball bearing thing, I think they get it off. You got one of those little earrings right there. You know, I, don't th I think I'd show up with my headset on uh, for, for the interview. Got the headset on. Yeah, well, no, I, I, I'm ready to fly. And uh, that's what you want to do. But, you know, I don't mind the earring. Earring's pretty cool, I, I guess, you know. But hey, if you're going to get an earring. You gotta make sure you get it on the right side. Yes. The proper, you get it on the wrong side, you get yourself a whole new set of friends, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> gotta be careful there. But you know what I think is perhaps vastly underrated? A tool, a thing that pilots just have never even recognized the value of, and that is the nose ring. You got a nose ring, you got something. Let me tell you what, you can use that to hold your charts with. <laughs> Your co-pilot's new hire got a nose ring. Hey, Bob, give me the approach chart for Atlanta. Ah! <laughs> Just like that. Man, that's great. Powerful stuff. Okay, how many people have the nose ring in here? Okay, <laughs> that's good. I shouldn't do that. It's terrible. But no, earrings, okay, be careful there. And nose ring, ah, I think I... Headset. 
Oh, if you got the nose ring, oxygen mask. Show up with the oxygen mask on. <laughs> oxygen mask and headset. You're going to get hired because they know you motivated. So uh, nervous. This guy got nervous. Say. We, he's coming down to land. And as he's coming down to land, his tongue is sticking out of his mouth like this. And I, I'm not kidding. How, how many people have ever seen that before? How many people have ever seen anything before? Uh, just, okay, okay, just checking. Just checking. And, uh, but his tongue was sticking out of his mouth. And I noticed that it, when he turned to the right, his tongue would go like this. He turned to the left, his tongue would go. He would actually signal the tongue. It was, a, I guess, a EST, extrasensory tongue position there in advance. He would point in the direction he's going to go. And I'm thinking, you know, this is pretty dumb because he, he can't do that on his check ride. You know, I mean, the guy's getting close to his check ride. And he's sitting there going, I guess when he gets his IFR ready, he'll go like this. <laughs> And, and uh, uh, I'm looking, and he's got his tongue sticking, and thinking, you know, he's check, take his check ride in four or five more hours. So I reach into my flight case, and I always carry a leather glove in my flight case, to a pair of leather gloves. And the reason I do that is because, by the way, this is important. You might want to remember this. In fact, everybody take your finger and do this. This is very important. Go ahead and do this. Let's uh -huh. take your finger up. No, put your finger right there. Put it in your ear, really. No, I'm serious. Do it. Do it. If you see somebody not doing that, I want you to raise your hand and point to them. All right? <laughs> If, if you could use the other hand, that would be good. Uh, but it had to, I put it right there. Because what I'm about to say is so important, I don't want it to go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay, that went over like a pregnant pole vaulter, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, don't worry, folks. Some of these are just for me. Anyway, so the leather glove is very important. Alpha, the Airline Pilot Association, says that uh, you want to carry a, and by the way, Alpa, whose motto is, last year their motto is, or was, safety first. I think Alpa, this year's motto is, hey Bob, what does that switch do? Anyway, uh, so they said carry a leather glove because if something catches fire, or is more specifically, something is with flame, you can reach out, grab it with the leather gloves on because leather doesn't burn. I mean, think back, when was the last time you ever saw a cow catch fire? <laughs> and so, so I put my leather glove on and I'm watching them. And you know, this is the, I guess the, impetuousness of, of youth, the impetuosity of youth. He has his tongue out. I reach over, and I go, Poof! I grab it like that. Mm. And he goes, let go. I've got to turn left. <laughs> so I have a little tongue right there. My grandfather was always messing with me, though. He was, he was, it was amazing, because my grandfather would, he, he's got a great sense of humor. He'd say things like, oh, I want you. He's, he's 90 years old, still alive and kicking. A little forgetful now, but, but still alive and kicky. And uh, he, when I was young, he'd go, uh, come here, come here. Yeah. You were adopted. I was adopted. Oh, no. He says, yeah, but they brought you back. <laughs> yeah. He's messing with my head. My grandfather was always